five categories that I'd like to share with you really quickly um, that are sort of the umbrella categories for what and why things happen to our hair. Male pattern baldness and female pattern baldness is true genetics. You can actually pass that along in your genes, okay? But in order to know whether you are suffering with male or female pattern baldness, you must eliminate the other four categories. Also, another hidden culprit of hair loss is medication. Medication. Many people don't know that diabetic medication, high blood pressure medication, these medications can actually cause your hair to thin and shed. So all of the underlying reasons as to why our hair is thin, why it's shedding, has a lot to do with what we're doing to the body itself. And women of all colors suffer from uterine fibroids. And we're not, <laughs> he's like, not me. <laughs> no, not you. <laughs> we want to talk about this and highlight this because this comes back to overall health. So this is one of so many elements that affect overall health. So the things that go on inside the body actually affect us on the outside of the body. The body will give you signals as to what's happening with you. Uterine fibroids, for example, can cause anemia. So what is anemia? It's low iron. Low iron can make your hair fall out. <coughs> low D, low vitamin D can make your hair fall out. So these are things that people are not associating with their hair. So I want to make sure that we are looking at what we're doing to the body from a whole wellness approach. By the time we get to our hair care products, that should be a support to what we're doing correctly to the body. So if you look here on the table, I don't know if everybody can see the table, most of the items on this side is what we eat most of. If you think about it, in 365 days in the year, you're going to consume most of the junk most of the processed foods. We're always driving through McDonald's, KFC. We don't have good exercise regimens because we're so busy. We don't drink enough water, right? Yeah, everybody's like, yeah, you're right. So what is the purpose of exercising? Is it just so that I can look fabulous? No, it's to excrete those toxins that are in the body. You Sweating, the pores in your body is very important to sweating out toxins getting rid of all the junk and the impurities. You need good blood flow. You need good oxygen flow. Why is good blood flow important to hair? Because hair is made from blood. So if you're looking for a miracle in the room, right? We have lots of great hair care products, adjacent clothes and coils. I'm the assistant director of marketing. But, but as a trichologist, I must tell you the truth. As it relates to the internal part of your body. So our skin, our teeth, our eyes, our hair are all affected by what we ingest in the body. So once, after we've done so much damage to the body, it starts telling on us. So it's like a tattletale. The body's a tattletale because we haven't actually been ingesting enough of the good nutrients to make sure that we can sustain our beauty on the outside. These are all aggressive manipulations. Tight braiding, ooh, ooh. Tight braiding. Tight braiding causes what is called traction alopecia. If you do this from these little small girls and you continue to do that, then your hair follicle says, you know what, I'm out of here. You don't need me and I don't need you. So then you start getting these slick patches of hair, right? slick scalp, it's a slick, slick scalp, you can see it under the light, it's real shiny. That's traction alopecia and there's no return after you've damaged the hair follicle. Heat damage. This young lady's suffering heat damage. You can see the two different textures of hair that she has. The back part of her hair is very curly. The front part of her hair is straighter. That's heat damage. So we wanna make sure we don't do this to our natural hair. Find out the temperatures that you need to use for your hair. Every hair is not the same, okay? Start with the lower temperatures and work your way up if you're wearing the straighter styles. Very important. Bad brushing. Even when we're detangling, many naturals don't know that you're supposed to, t 
to detangle, starting from the ends and working up to the root. Never brush your hair from your root to your end, okay? You can cause breakage, you can cause your hair to pop and thin, okay? So the hair has three layers. The hair cuticle is the outer layer. It's the protective layer for the hair. If you're brushing incorrectly, if you're not using the right products, if you're over processing with chemicals, okay, you can damage the cuticle layer of the hair. The cortex is the center part of the hair and that's where your color lives. Also the medulla, which is another little air pocket in the hair and science doesn't quite know what it's there for. If you look to the right hand side where it says unhealthy hair and healthy hair, you can see what a healthy hair strand looks like. So when your stylist, when you're talking about my hair is dry, my hair, low porosity, high porosity, all of these things, you, the healthy hair is the, health, the hair that actually regulates your porosity. Those cuticles are actually able to open at the right time and close at the right time. They're smooth, the hair is more shiny, it's less frizzy because it's healthy. So let's talk about the benefits. I was talking about food sources, right? So the consumption of flaxseed, omega-3 fatty acids, and it's good for heart health. Again, why would it be, why, why would heart health mean anything to hair growth? Well, in the beginning, I showed you the little capillaries that feed the derma papilla, right? And hair grows from good blood. So if your body is pumping, your heart is pumping the way that it's supposed to, that's actually gonna regulate your body, right? You don't want slow blood or no blood. You don't wanna to have to take a lot of medication. Eat healthy, exercise, okay? Lower your stress levels, and you'd be very surprised how you can wean yourself off of all of the medication. It also helps to inhibit and slow growth of tumors. Which tumors did I show earlier? The fibroids, right? Those are tumors. So flaxseed is a superfood that helps with that. It's also a great source of vitamin E and fiber. It's an anti-inflammatory. It has anti-inflammatory properties. And why is that important? Scalp health. So it's very good for eczema. It's good for dandruff. It's good for inflammation of the scalp. So the same thing as it relates to consumption, you want to make sure that you're applying it to the hair in the same fashion because of all of the good properties that it has. Hi, Crystal. Um, Crystal, I just wanted to know how do we deal then with dandruff, dry scalp, flaking, because what I found is even when I do put on what I would call maybe like a moisturizer for my hair, during the day if I do scratch, you know, it's, it still is a bit of dryness. So how do we deal? Is that like an internal thing? Okay, and like I mentioned about the flaxseed for instance, it's one superfood, but I encourage you to look up the superfoods. Many scalp disorders, you can actually exacerbate the problem by putting the wrong thing on the scalp. Separated dermatitis does not like oil. So it actually makes it worse. So if you know that you have a um, exacerbated uh, scalp issue first, talk to your dermatologist. I encourage everyone, talk to your doctors. Find out what your vitamin levels are, your mineral levels are from your MD. How do you get that information from your blood work, okay? Don't just go to the doctor and say, and the doctor says, oh yeah, you're fine, you low iron, go take a couple of pills. Find out why that's happening to you, okay? Don't leave your health up to your doctor. You are responsible for your own health. Your hair grows really nice. And there's nothing you have to lose from. And two weeks ago, I had to make the cell just look like something. And I'm almost like, I'm it's so short. Like sure. But short, no one can hit me long. Have you ever cut it? Have you ever cut it? Well, girl, you've got to stop cutting. You, stop it. <laughs> you need to be patient and let it grow. See, yeah. patience. If I can teach you anything about natural hair, it requires patience. I'm often told that it's a sign of healthy hair when your hair bounces back to shrinky to a bit of a problem. So how, how do I use shrinky? So you can use elongating gels. You can also do uh, protective styles like twists. Um, if you do a twist out, and I like to add like a little a perm rod on the end, which gives a lot of the definition once you um, take it down and untwist it. So there are various uh, styles, braid outs, bantu knots, different things that can help you with elongation. Um, what advice would you give to somebody like me who has mostly gray hair? So last night, so you're looking at my hair, 
I use perm rods and roller sets with the don't shrink and some of the oil from the unjacket line mm -hmm. on my hair. Got up this morning and had my stylist just to kind of pull it out.